Hello. In this session, we will look at some of the features of your uh, EC2 service. So in the last session, we looked at an introduction to your EC2 service. So once again, EC2 service is all about your server. So at any point, if you want to launch any virtual machines or if you want to launch any servers to host our applications, we can make use of your EC2 service for that, right? And there are many things that we can do with your uh, EC2 service, like you can manage the storage, the set, uh, security, the networking, all those things can be managed. Now in this session, we will look at some of the features or some of the benefits that your EC2 provides uh, uh, in terms of you know launching your instances. Once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So whenever we talk about your EC2 service, it provides us with a lot of features. So it is really feature rich. Um, it provides you different, different uh, functionalities. So the first thing we have is your instance. Now, what is your instance? Instance is nothing but your virtual server. So in the EC2 world, the virtual machine or the servers, we call them as your EC2 instances, which are nothing but your virtual servers that are running on the AWS platform. Then you have your AMIs. Now AMIs, it stands for Amazon Machine Image. Now, whenever we want to launch our servers, we need to specify the operating system. We need to specify the network capacity, the storage type. All those informations are uh, pre-built or pre-configured into AMI. So these are your templates. All right. So these are pre-configured templates that we can use whenever we launch. We want to launch our uh, instances, the EC2 virtual machines. Uh, on the AWS platform. So these are again some blueprints, some templates that are readily available for us. And uh, this will contain information like what operating system you want to use to launch the virtual machine. Then we have your instance types. Now depending on your capacity, maybe you may need uh, you know, two CPU core or four GB RAM or four CPU core, eight GB RAM. All those are categorized into instance types. So depending on the application that you want to run, depending on the capacity that you need, you can choose the instance type that you want. So this provides you with various configurations of the CPU capacity, the memory capacity, your storage, the networking capacity, and also if you need uh, GPUs, the graphics hardware, that even that is available within your instance types. Then you have your key pairs. Now, uh, at any point, if you want to log in to your server, so EC2 by default, it makes use of your key pair for the authentication. So this will be your secure login information to connect to your instances. So maybe if it's a Linux machine and if you want to do an SSH, we make use of your key pairs for that. By default, your EC2 does not support password authentication. So key pairs is what we use to authenticate to the server and to connect to the server. So AWS will store the public key and we, the user, will store the private key in a secure place. So whenever we want to connect to the server, we provide the private key and then we connect to the server. Then you have your Amazon EBS volume. So this is your storage, the physical storage. So how much of hard drive capacity or hard disk capacity do you want for your server? So maybe 100 GB, 200 GB, 300 GB or 50 GB. So what is the storage capacity you want for your servers? That can be defined in your Amazon EBS volume. So this is your persistent storage volumes for your data. And this makes use of your elastic block storage. So it's your block type of storage. Then we have your security groups. These are nothing but your firewall. So we can use the security groups to control what traffic can come in, what traffic can go out of your EC2 instances. So all those things can be controlled by making use of your security group. So this acts as a virtual firewall and we can use this to specify on what port numbers you want to allow from which source IP address do you want to allow the traffic, uh, what is the destination IP ranges to which your instances can connect. All that information we can uh, define it in the security groups and this will act as your firewall that will control the access to your EC2 instances. Then we have your elastic IPs. Now at any point if you need an static IP address for your servers, we can make use of your elastic IP addresses. So this provides us with a static IPv4 address for dynamic cloud computing. So the advantage of this elastic IP is that the IP address will never change irrespective of the status of your instance. Whether you stop the server or restart the server, the IP address will remain the same. The IP address will not be lost. We will be talking about this more in the upcoming sessions. The next benefit we have is your VPC. Now VPC it stands for virtual private cloud. Now VPCs can be used to isolate your uh, resources in the cloud platform. For example, let's say you have three different applications. Now if you want to isolate the resources for these applications, we can make use of your VPC. So this is all about your networking. 
So using VPC, we can configure the subnets, the security groups, the route tables, the gateways, all those things can be configured by making use of your VPC. So virtual networks you can create that are logically isolated from the rest of the AWS cloud. So like I said, you can use this to isolate your resources within the cloud platform. All right. So you can optionally con connect these virtual networks to your own network. So VPC is all about the networking. All right. So again, we will be having a separate session for the VPC service. It's a very important service. So we will be talking more on this later on. But these are some of the features that we have when we talk about your EC2. So once again, it provides you different different instance types. It gives you pre-configured templates called AMIs. It uh, has key pairs, security groups, v VPCs, elastic block stores. All of these things can be configured. You can customize it based on your requirement to launch your EC2 instances. So that's basically your features for your EC2. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the videos.